Hey everybody, welcome to this week's Wednesday workshop here inside the our Facebook group, Power Up Your Innate Potential. My name is Heather Dran at Sarah's Hilliard and I am so excited to bring to you this week's topic about permissiveness, carrying on with our discussions about narcissistic leadership behavior. Our focus today is all about permissiveness, not just about leaders. We see it in parents as well. We see it in teachers. Uh, permissiveness is a very, very prevalent approach, uh, prevalent defense that we see that's used in that narcissistic defense system. And that's what this conversation today is going to be all about. We're going to be talking about the trend in business, in life, in families to allow people kind of off the hook when they fail to meet their commitments on time, uh, the, the sort of moving away from, you know, directing and governing of people and what it is they're doing and how they're doing it. We see it uh, in particular in the organizational context for sure. Um, and this permissiveness, this unwillingness to kind of step in and exercise authority in whatever role that you happen to be in is actually a narcissistic defense. And today's workshop is all about understanding this particular narcissistic defense, why we use it, how it shows up. I'm going to give you lots of examples and stories about it um, so that you can relate to it. Make sure that you're kind of thinking of it, becoming aware of it. Um, and again, as always, if you're joining me here live, let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you have any examples. If you're catching this uh, on the replay on our YouTube channel uh, or here inside of the Facebook group, again, please make sure to post your comments, your questions, uh, so that we can respond and, and let you know and engage further in the conversation. Now, permissiveness, and when we see permissive practices, be it as a leader or as a parent, it's about being image-driven, okay? And permissiveness is very much rooted in that. We're striving to be a good leader. We're striving to be a good parent. Uh, we want to be liked. We want to be seen in a particular way. It's not about our effectiveness. Um, and I, you know, you've probably noticed it, right? In your life, in your work life in particular, this trend uh, that we see of leaders really not stepping into leading, right? Refusing to do, uh, you know, deal with things that are going on in their work environment with their employees, um, at really tolerating all kinds of behavior and all kinds of work practices from our employees, as opposed to really stepping in to direct and to lead. Same goes in our personal context with children uh, is where we often see it come up. Um, and many of us are trying so hard to be what we believe employees or others expect of us um, and doing what we think we should be doing uh, that we allow all kinds of bad behavior to happen, right? So we can be permissive in our personal relationships. We can be permissive with our kids. We can be permissive with our employees, our colleagues. Again, permissiveness is a narcissistic defense that we're going to pull out and use uh, when we feel the need to be self-protective, okay? And, and it's we end up, when we're using using permissiveness, we actually end up uh, getting taken advantage of. We end up being disrespected, but we don't notice it and we don't think about it in that context, okay? So permissive narcissistic defenses, much like the narcissistic defenses we've been talking about over the last few weeks, um, again, are not about narcissistic personality disorder. This is about us going in and using these narcissistic defenses from a self-protective place, right? It's us choosing and, and being triggered into self-protective behaviors. Permissiveness is just one of the approaches or one of the narcissistic defenses that we can find ourselves using, okay? Um, if you haven't had a chance yet to catch some of the other videos with respect to this topic, narcissism in everyday life, um, really starting to, to learn about all of the different um, symptoms or behaviors that we see that are rooted in this narcissistic defense, uh, self-protective system that we will use. Uh, I really encourage you to check them out. In, they're all there inside of our Facebook group. They're also there on our YouTube channel, dranatsarahs-hilliard.com, or not .com, sorry, dranatsarahshilliard on YouTube. Uh, go there and check it out. So at the bottom line, like all of the narcissistic defenses, the permissive one is triggered by fear. Fear that um, if we assert our position authority, if we assert that power that we have, that we're entitled to use in our role, again, as a leader, as a peer, as a, a partner, as a, a, a parent, um, that 
other people around us just won't be able to handle it, right? So that's the fear that triggers this permissiveness. Um, and we mistakenly end up believing that employees or our kids or others should be empowered to do it, to figure it out, to make the decisions uh, without any boundaries, without any expectations, direction, corrective feedback, you name it, okay? Now, in the work context, permissive leaders mistakenly, um, you know, allow their employees to do what they feel like doing it or do it the way they feel like doing it without regard to process, procedures, um, experience of their boss. So again, it's that permissiveness is about allowing uh, without giving direction and without exercising our own authority. Um, it's as though if we actually exercise our authority, as though we actually exercise our power as we are entitled to do so, that it's going to be offensive to others, okay? And so as a result, we end up rationalizing um, and 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 what and ra and convincing ourselves or you know rationalizing that we really shouldn't lead we shouldn't direct we shouldn't correct uh, we shouldn't define whatever it is that we're whatever context we're in um, because again we don't want to offend anybody but bottom line what I really want you to understand is that permissive behavior again whether it's coming out in a leadership context in our relationships as parents it's simply a form of self-protection. It's another strategy that we employ in order to keep ourselves feeling safe and in our comfort zone, and it is often unconscious in leaders. And I keep bringing this back to leaders because we started noticing this trend many, many years ago, and, and it is what prompted Anne and I uh, to write our book, um, So You Think You Can Lead. And this book is really all about uh, diving into that permissiveness uh, in the leadership context uh, and what it is we need to do to develop beyond it, right? And so really being able to understand kind of what contributes to our use of permissiveness as a defense um, and what how it is we actually gets in the way of us being effective as leaders and again we can translate that into parents into partners in relationships um, and really starting to understand how do we develop beyond it because like all of the narcissistic defenses it's a developmental gap and so we have the ability to shift to develop to build awareness um, to become conscious of when we're relying on permissiveness in order to make that transition so what else am i talking about here today well Again, we're gonna talk about how permissive leaders in particular use this narcissistic defense to support their image about being a good leader. Uh, the three main narcissistic strategies of the permissive leader is the focus, and we're gonna talk about some of the examples. So really start to see this in your own life and how this plays out. Um, and again, the narcissistic strategies in this case are to compensate or to cope with incompetence because we lack the skills, we haven't had the training, and so because of that, we revert to these narcissistic defenses. It's always helpful to understand these narcissistic defenses because it, it we can then look at the impact of this behavior and our permissiveness on employees, on organizational outcomes, on our children, on our relationships, right? Because all of every time we use one of these narcissistic defenses, there is an impact, right, that we, we have. Um, and again, we convince ourselves, we sound really rational when we talk ourselves out of leading, exercising our authority or power, but it's actually because we're acting from our fear. And that's, again, the other thing to always remember about these narcissistic defenses, it's fear that is driving us to move into that self-protective system. But at the end of the day, when we use permissive behavior, it actually gets in the way of building, building our talent, building our relationships, building our children, you know, really supporting the development of our children. So we're going to help you recognize permissive behavior. If you, if you, it's not kind of coming to your mind already, um, this notion of permissiveness, we're going to really make sure that you can recognize it by talking about three of the core strategies that are used. Um, also starting to get you to think about when you compensate for permissiveness around you, right? Whether it's your partner or your boss, um, when they're failing to actually step in to define, to lead, or to resolve conflict. 
Um, and in the organizational context, we always talk about if you have a really permissive leader who's not defining, not directing, not governing, there's a bigger gap that you have to step into in order to be able to be effective within that context, okay? So let's talk about the three um, main strategies that are used around permissiveness. And these are where you're really going to start to see this behavior in action, again, in your organizational environment or even in your personal life. So the first one I want to talk about that's used, you know, the first um, strategy that's used by those using permissiveness as a narcissistic defense is abdicating responsibility. Essentially how this plays out is we have, if we think about it in the workplace, it's leaders giving their subordinates the power to make their own decisions about their work and, and giving them the absolute freedom to do the work however it is they want to do it. And by doing this, they're actually abdicating responsibility for leading, for driving for performance, for getting things done to the, to the quality standard or the, the expectation. In that abdicating of responsibility, we see it over and over again. And in fact, when in a group that we were just doing some, some recent leadership development with, a lot of the leaders were saying to us, well, I can't tell them that, and I can't expect that of them, and I just need to let them figure it out on their own, and then when they get it wrong, uh, then I have to clean up the mess. That's abdicating responsibility. It's kind of like, you know, giving the, the kids the key to the candy store and saying, you know, eat whatever you want, right? Or, you know, it's, a, it's like parents not having structure or bedtimes or rules for their kids to adhere to because we're abdicating responsibility. We don't want them to not like us. We don't want to have to step into that place of exercising our authority. Go back to that example of this group of leaders who were all sharing this notion um, in this conversation, in this coaching session about the fact that they just cannot do these things um, and they can't actually exercise leadership, that they're not allowed to tell their employees what's expected of them. And the fear around that and what was really triggering this abdication of responsibility was that they felt that people would get upset and that no one would want to work for them or that they would be accused of micromanaging. And so again, this is where we see the permissiveness emerge into the workplace in particular, because we as leaders, we, you know, we don't want to deal with the potential for our employees being upset and that because that doesn't allow us to maintain our image of being the great leader or being a good leader, right? So if my employees like me, then I must be a really good leader, but that triggers us to ab abdicate responsibility um, and not stepping in um, and really, again, we use the words directing and governing and, and really, and, you know, at the end of the day, making sure that we are defining what is expected. So when we're being permissive, we just allow people to do whatever they feel like doing and we don't put any direction to them. And you can think about some examples in your own experiences where, you, where you've seen that, where, you know, people are just running off deciding for themselves or maybe you're a leader and you get frustrated because you have employees who are making making decisions that you disagree with or that you don't trust. And again, it's that abdication of responsibility. So we really want to be aware of that because when we are working out of the permissiveness narcissistic defense, we're not present to actually being there and leading. Okay. The second strategy that's most commonly used in this permissiveness uh, approach is avoiding conflict. Now I'll put my hand up to that one. Um, Avoidance of conflict is a key strategy of the permissive leader uh, or the permissive parent or the permissive partner because it keeps us safe, right? It allows us to feel safe while creating the circumstances where it makes it look like the other person is the problem, the employee, uh, the coworker, the partner, the spouse, you know, uh, or even the child, right? And, and, it, and then what we hear because of that avoidance of conflict, and then we see uh, the leader then complaining and making making the issue up, making the conflict about the individual employee, as opposed to recognizing the fact that the conflict has emerged because of that permissiveness, because of that failure to step in and really direct um, and be specific and, and to make sure that people are being held accountable. Or, or even that, you know, I'll give you an example of a, a client of ours that we're working with right now is, um, you know, keeps complaining about this employee 
and the conflict that that employee is creating or the conflict that's emerging between two employees actually but really the conflict the reason for that conflict is because the the they as the leader have not defined roles systems authorities how decisions will get made who's accountable for what and so instead it's this conflict and now they're making it about you know it's making it as he complains to to the upper management uh within this organization that it's because there's an interpersonal issue between these two people but again it's not. It's because of that avoidance of conflict and the abdicating of responsibility combined with the avoiding of conflict where that leader has not gone in to say, this is okay, this is not okay, this is how I want it done. He's leaving it to them to sort it out. And of course, as peer employees, it's very, very challenging to do that, especially if they haven't had the opportunity to really develop up the skills around conflict resolution and, and issue resolution. And, and so again, it creates the circumstances, this avoiding of the conflict, it creates the circumstances where it looks like employees are the problem. And, and this, you know, with avoiding of conflict, we see that in performance feedback. We see it in, you know, where managers are, are not having the conversations with their employees to correct the performance because they don't want to have the conversation. Um, we see it in, um, in personal relationships where one of the partners is doing something um, that is really not sitting well or is creating conflict for the other partner, but they're staying silent on it um, and they're not defining that expectation. I know even for me personally as a parent where you know it's it's like I would see something that was going on within my family context and because I wanted to avoid the conflict I wouldn't say anything but I also wouldn't define the circumstances that I wanted to see happen or my expectations I wouldn't lead out um, in order to prevent the conflict from ever emerging right and so it's one of the things because permissiveness is one of my um, self-protective strategies that I use it's it was really having for me to learn to define it so not abdicating responsibility around what am I trying to create how do I want this to work and then when the conflict emerges sometimes what I would do is especially if the conflict was with with my in-laws let's say I would say to my spouse okay your family you deal with it um or I would simply kind of go into a kind of a, a workaround as opposed to staying with the conflict and then going back to what do I need to define? What are my expectations? How do we work this through as opposed to simply staying out of the conflict, right? So, so again, that's one of the strategies that we see used over and over again. And it translates both in our personal lives and in our work environment. So if you're finding yourself leaning towards this permissive narcissistic defense, it's thinking about what are some of the conflicts that you're avoiding, right? Um, the third approach or the third strategy that's used when we talk about this permissiveness is a lack of assertion, which makes sense, right? So we talked about abdicating responsibility. We've talked about avoidance of conflict. So the third one I want to talk about is the lack of assertion. So this is really where the, you know, those that are using the permissive defense don't like to use their position power or their personal authority to get things done. Okay. So we recognize that something is not happening, that something is not, you know, going forward the way it needs to get forward. And, and they end up acting more like a colleague than a leader, you know, saying yes when they mean no, or, you know, observing when something is not going ahead as it should be and not actually correcting the situation. And, you know, I have a, a client that we've been working with for several years where, you know, permissiveness is very, very prevalent within the leadership group. They're still developing up their skills to work through it. And, and where we really see it as at the peer level, they've gotten much stronger in directing and not abdicating responsibility down into their own functional areas. But where we see it still having a bit of a stranglehold on the organization uh, is when they're dealing with each other, where the authority is not so clear and they're not understanding how to step in and assert, right? Assert that this is something that needs to get done. And so I'm going to take the lead. I'm going to facilitate it. I'm going to make sure that it happens. Instead, what we see is people, you know, complaining about it or blaming or saying, you know, it's because of this or because of that, as opposed to saying, okay, I see it. I understand what needs to happen. It's not working the way it 
gets established right now, I need to assert myself into the situation and actually um, move into that again, that directing and governing behavior we want to see when we're leading with authority versus leading through permissiveness. And so permissiveness, when we, when again, we're practicing this strategy of lack of assertion is we're tolerating. We're tolerating whatever is coming up. We're not saying anything. We're going along to get along again, more about our image than it really is about our effectiveness. And, and what we, again, I have to say that with all of these, when we, when we're dealing with clients that are struggling with using this narcissistic defense is they're quick to blame and complain. And, and they talk as though they're powerless to do anything about it. So I'm going to keep with this, this client example that I was giving you and, and having specific conversations with, with a couple of them where, you know, we were talking about the fact that they were not getting what they needed out of another functional area. And so it was really interfering with their ability to be effective and their and how they were being perceived even within the organization or how their function was being perceived within the organization. And and so this again, this lack of assertion where it's like they're not even going to this other group to say, hey, you know, we need to get in a room together. We need to sort this out. You know, here are some of the issues that we're experiencing. Instead, it's the, well, they should know, right? Or they should know, or I just have to put up with it and not going into that place of assertion. Now, again, what with each one of these strategies, it's self-protective, it's fear-driven, right? It's the fear of how will I look? How will they react to me? Will they see me as being a good leader? Will I, you know, will they talk negatively about me? So it's image-driven, this use of permissiveness. And it's the reason why it's so prevalent in parenting as well um, in, is because, again, it's like, well, how will my, will my kids like me? Will they be, you know, will they see me as being someone that they want to have a relationship with? And when we focus more on that image and on being liked, which is part of the, the fear pattern behind this, is we are not focused on being effective, right? So if we're going to be effective as a leader, if we're going to be effective as a partner, as a family member, as a parent, it means that we have to do these things where we have to take responsibility. We have to define and direct. We have to deal with conflict uh, and we have to assert ourselves in order to make sure that we are going and everyone is moving in the direction that we need to be moving within. And, and moving out of this place of powerlessness, right? Because that's what goes with when we're using the permissiveness defense is we are convincing ourselves rationally in our heads, the way we talk about it, we are convincing ourselves that we can't do anything about it, right? That the employee has all the power, the child, the partner, everybody but us has all of the power. And as long as, and again, that's the fear talking, right? The fear of, but if I assert myself, then maybe they won't like me or they'll get upset with me or something will happen. And that's the fear that's driving the narcissistic behavior of permissiveness. Now, as always, when we talk about these defensive strategies, it is a developmental gap, right? We all have it, right? We all experienced, you know, sort of in, in that, in our childhood development, they're all had its circumstances that lead to us as adults having areas that we need to focus on our development. And, and permissiveness is just, again, if you are struggling with this, if you can see yourself in this conversation we're having about using this particular narcissistic defense, it simply means that there's a developmental gap that you need to work with. And that for you, it really is about starting to build those skills that support you to move out of feeling the need to be self-protective. So conflict resolution skills, defining skills, you know, skills that are associated with understanding how to direct, um, redefining what your power and authority, what you're actually entitled to do, how you're entitled to lead, how you're entitled to define within your family and your family dynamics. So, so on the one hand, I want you to leave this session really being able to recognize the defensive strategies that we've talked about of permissive leaders, right? So that you can better set boundaries with them if you happen to have one as your boss, um, so that you can ask for what you need, that you can step into that gap more clearly. Um, like any other narcissistic gap, you know, the key to dealing with this is to stay objective and to not react. 
right? To not react, to not, you know, go into that, they, well, they should do this and they should do that, but really staying objective and looking at what needs to happen and therefore what do you need to happen. You cannot take the behavior of a permissive leader or a permissive partner personally, okay? So you have to look at it as that is their developmental gap, but you don't need to stay in that place of, of reacting. When they abdicate responsibility, it's not about you just picking up and owning it, right? Um, and if they won't help with the conflict, it's not, a, it's like you really need to help them come into it and work their way through it, okay? Don't fight their fights for them, okay? Because again, that's going to impact them. You have to, or impact you, you have to stay in the reality of what it is of the work that you have to do and, and put those boundaries out so that you're not taking on the work that they need to do. And it's true with partners. I know I find this, what you, you know, because I have a, a partner who uses the permissiveness, um, uh, self-defense strategy or narcissistic defense strategy as well. And I'm always having to resist the impulse of stepping into that gap. And instead, you know, sort of staying with the, you know, no, this is yours. This is yours to do and yours to follow through with, right? Um, and then accepting the fact that, you, you know, they're going to make those choices within there. Um, and then I, I need to let go, right? I need to let go and not expect um, things to be a particular way because that's the way I would create it for myself. And, and again, allowing some of that pieces where it's not impacting me, but where it is impacting me, also not abdicating my responsibility in the dynamic and in the relationship in order to drive the change that I want to see. Okay. Remaining objective, asserting without being emotional, really, really important as I've talked in the prior videos is when we escalate our emotion, it just feeds the narcissistic defenses uh, and it doesn't actually leave us moving into that place of powering up our potential. So with that, so excited to have you checking out this video here today. Again, if you haven't caught some of our previous videos um, about narcissistic defenses and narcissistic behavior, really encourage to check you to check them out either on our Facebook group, Power Up Your Innate Potential, uh, or on our YouTube channel. Uh, and with that, I'm gonna wrap up. Again, if you have any questions, um, you know, again, feel free to post them, even if you're catching this uh, on the replay uh, or on our YouTube channel. We are always monitoring and responding to questions and comments. And if you want to learn more about permissive leadership and how to really move past it, I uh, really encourage you to order your copy of So You Think You Can Lead. It is available from Amazon. Great read on how to develop ourselves. But also, if you are in a context where you're dealing with permissive leaders, gives you lots of information that's really going to help you to really understand that behavior and what it is you need to do in order to shift out of it to being able to lead with authority. And again, so with that, I'm going to leave you. Don't forget to try and incorporate some of this learning into your week, um, thinking about and reflecting on where you're seeing permissive behavior in others, where you're practicing permissive narcissistic defenses so that you can continue on your journey to powering up your innate potential. We'll see you next time.